We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today, longtime Tennessean reporter and editor Dwight Lewis, and now um, David Ewing, who's a Nashville historian. Uh, David, let me start with you. We started, what happened last weekend? We started with a very um, peaceful uh, rally, a protest march down at the, at, up at the state capitol. Then suddenly when it moved towards the downtown police precinct, there was some cars vandalized, police cars vandalized, other kind of problems. We got to the courthouse, the mayor called it a riot. We had the, 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 basically the courthouse firebombed, lots of rocks and windows thrown. What, what changed, what made that go negative? probably lack of an understanding of history and the rich legacy that very young people, students, Tennessee State, Fisk University, and American Baptist College led a movement and changed history based on the you know, segregation of lunch counters and other public spaces. And it all kind of came into one day on April 19th when Z. Alexander Luby's house was bombed. 4,000 students marched on the courthouse, the very courthouse was vandalized. And it was there that the civil rights movement got national attention and everyone was paying attention to what these young people were doing. And uh, Dwight, there was a plaque commemorating what happened there when they marched on the courthouse in 1960. And that was destroyed by some of the protesters. They actually used it as projectiles and rocks to break out the windows. Obviously the people involved there, Dwight, didn't understand the history of that building. I think you're right, Pat, uh, and I agree with what, what David said. I think one of the things I think uh, you have to do is if you're leading the demonstration, you have to make sure who who are the participants, and you have to keep an eye on the participants and not just let people come in from the outside. You have to you have to watch who's involved, who's taking part. Now the uh, the police chief also indicates, David, that uh, he they sort of underestimated how many police they needed down there. Although they, they certainly had a lot in the downtown area, was this a situation where perhaps they also sort of thought that Nashville had a history of being a moderate city and things like this? We've had several marches in Nashville in the recent years, blocked the interstate, uh, even interrupted a metro council meeting, but had been no violence. Did they underestimate that this time? I think we were all taken by surprise that this peaceful protests, you know, morphed into something later on that evening where violence was committed on Lower Broadway and outside the courthouse. Because we had had such a great history of nonviolence and marching, it's ironic that that same courthouse was the place where Diane Nash and John Lewis spent time in jail. As you know, Pat, the jail was in the attic of the courthouse back then, so when they were arrested, the lunch counter sit-ins, they went to that courthouse and spent time in jail. Dwight, the people you know, that were involved Pat, in that. They, go ahead, go ahead, Dwight. One of the things that happened during the city movements here is that people practice. And e even with the uh, Freedom Rides, people, you know, there were there were courses, people sat down and uh, some of the leaders poured water over uh, people who were going to take part. And they would tell you, if you could not be nonviolent, you could not participate. Right. My minister, Kelly Miller Smith Sr. and Reverend James Lawson trained people. That's one of the reasons why we weren't the first lunch counter sit in Greensboro with a week and a half before us. We were training before we sent people out to these lunch counters. Dwight, once you became a reporter in Nashville, you had a chance to talk to Diane Nash. You had a chance to talk to Rip Patton. You had a chance to talk to John Lewis. They started and did very remarkable things at a very early age in Nashville and it had a nationwide impact. They did, uh, you know, their names will never be forgotten, I don't think. And, and we have to, you know, we have to tell the younger people. And unfortunately, there, there are many students today, many young people who know the history, but too many don't and too many have been left, left on the outside. And I think some of those people uh, took part. You know, I, I like to know the background of the man who, who set the uh, courthouse, tried to set the courthouse on fire. I like to know the background of some of the others who have been arrested or who did some some awful things. Dwight, a lot of uh, speculation across the country about who's involved, whether it's been some right wing or left wing groups involved. Uh, also, a, a concern I think late in the week that perhaps the there's a move to act too quickly perhaps in placing some charges and they've been withdrawn. Uh, it's a it's a very difficult time for everybody, including those who are investigating the situation. It is, and I think we have to you know, take time and just be sure. I think that's one of the reasons why uh, it took a few days to uh, 
to charge the officers, uh, not the officer who who had his knee on uh, on the victim in Minneapolis, but the other officers, other three officers. It took some time to get to bring those charges, and you want to make sure the charges stick, and that you can get a conviction if you go to court. Uh, David, are there? Diane Nash. Go ahead. Go ahead, David. I, I was going to say Diane Nash and John Lewis knew that they were going to get arrested, and they prepared for it. And, the difference is today, some of these people that made damage to our courthouse in Lower Broadway just wanted to be vandalized and didn't care about the consequences, I guess. David, Ewing, Nashville historian, and also Dwight Lewis, former editor and longtime reporter at the Tennessee, and are our guests on Inside Politics, talking about the events of this past week in terms of civil unrest across the country. Our conversation continues on the other side of these messages.